Hi there, everyone. Rob here with today's Western Pacific weather update. It's currently the 28th of June, 2012, approximately uh, 03 Universal Time for everybody watching this worldwide. It's about 1100 Philippine Standard Time, where you have our tropical storm Duxuri now. Actually, uh, some of the agencies have downgraded this to a tropical depression, but I usually base this off of JMA, which they still have it up to a tropical storm. We're going to be talking about this here, how it's affecting the Philippines currently, but also dive in on our newest invest area this is invest 96w and it does have some rotation in the cloud cover and a few of the models are picking up on possible development of this big massive cloud cover off here towards the east but first tropical storm Duxuri. And if we take a look at this microwave imagery loop, you can see that a lot of cloud cover moved across much of the northern Philippines in through the overnight hours and now into the early morning hours here indicated in these last several frames. Uh, really already widespread precipitation from Apari down towards Aurora has been recorded even as far south as Kansagora on this entire area is under signal force warning 2 issued by Bagasa. Now, uh, really, this is the main area you're going to be seeing that threat of flooding and landslides here across much of the northern Philippines, but also even down towards the south, the assessment of the southwest monsoon down towards Manila, you also could still be seeing these heavy rain showers. And as we pull back the picture actually here on this infrared slash water vapor imagery, you can see that most of the uh, northern portions of Luzon are covered up by cloud masses this morning. Uh, a lot of these areas in the darker colors really indicating those higher cloud tops. And if we even switch the frames here, you can see that the bright white much colder cloud tops, thus heavier rains across much of this area, but also you still have that inflow we have been talking about for quite some time now, pushing down here even as far south as Visayas and southern Luzon, so you can't be ruled out of the heavy rainfall either. Now, good news, this is moving rather fast, should be pushing off here towards the northwest into the, uh, your Thursday and then into Friday afternoon likely will be out here towards the South China Sea but still you're gonna be having that inflow bringing that heavy precipitation but this is what I really want to talk about and why Duxoria is still very very weak well our, our Dindo here being here by Bagasa is reason is because we have these uh, wind shear coming in from the east here and you can see it actually on this wind shear chart upwards of 20 knots over that center of circulation that is very unconducive for tropical cyclone formation anywhere in the world only streamlines pushing down here towards the south that's why it is so clear in this area yet over here you have that heavy convection and not on this imagery because this is a infrared imagery but if we go uh, and look at a visible image, it makes it very clear what I'm talking about here actually this is where you have all that convection and you would think that's where the center of circulation actually is but not so much actually just here towards the northeast of Luzon that is the center of circulation just a moderate cumulus within that center that's where you have that lowest pressure so this is why the storm is very weak at this time there's your uh, low pressure area and this is where all of those rain showers and thunderstorm activity is currently occurring and at least at this time uh, expecting the center to move just towards the north of Luzon so this is not going to be making landfall at least as far as the center of circulation but on the other hand the worst weather has pushed over Luzon that's why I don't really like using that center line sometimes always remember the cone of air or also you have to watch at how big the storm is so a lot more detail goes into the storm systems than the, where exactly the center of circulation is going to be moving over now let's take a look at actually where Hong Kong is expecting the storm to go and I'm using Hong Kong because it does look like it could be heading uh, towards your location moving just north of the Philippines here and then pushing off uh, towards the Hong Kong region going into your Saturday this could be bringing some tropical storm force winds uh, definitely not anything too damaging but the flooding precipitation could be also kicking up those seas right near the coastline across much of southeastern China not even including uh, the southern portions of Taiwan you also could be seeing these rough seas here up to about five meters high as that storm continues to charge on here towards the northwest and here's just another one of the many agencies out here. Joint Typhoon Warning Center currently has this as a tropical depression, but they do expect it to re-intensify back up to a tropical storm as it continues to push off here towards the warmer waters of the South China Sea. Also, vertical wind shear should be slightly more relaxed, but I don't think it's going to be having the time since it is cruising ratherly at a fast pace, making landfall here by Saturday morning just towards the northeast of Hong Kong by their, their uh, forecast here. So uh, just with that said, similar situation 
situation going to be expected here? And now let's take a look at what JMA is expecting. Villa, very similar track, but also expecting that landfall there by Saturday morning. Actually, a little bit closer to Hong Kong than what JTWC is saying as well. But I guess what the uh, big and the very good news is that it is steaming and forward motion at a rather fast pace. So with that said, this is actually going into your Friday morning. It will be well past the uh, Philippines here. Most of that convection should lift off here. Once again, though, that southwest monsoon wrapping around the storm system still could be bringing some heavy rain showers there towards the west coast of Luzon and even down there towards Visayas. Uh, even on the east coast of Taiwan, you're also going to be having that wraparound motion. So you could also be seeing some heavy precip as the storm continues to push off there towards the west. But now let's take a look at the Coamps High Resolution model with the JTC, um, WC overlay here just towards the north of the Philippines. And uh, really, this also is picking up on the storm system, making a slight re-intensification there in the South China Sea, though it does remain rather disorganized. Now, remember, this only goes out in about 48 hours. They also do keep it rather slow on that note as well. But I think we can all agree, just given the forward motion of this storm at this time, though, it actually should be a little bit farther here towards the west, but not too much farther. This is actually indicating about 29 at 12 Z, so into the evening hours of the 29th. Now, also, I want to show you here really quick before we start talking about our new tropical area out here way towards the east is here in uh, Korea. Now, uh, we don't talk about Korea too much, but they are under a severe drought across much of this area. Many crops have been damaged. Uh, really, it's actually one of the worst in about 100 years. Uh, a the saving grace does look like it's going to be on the horizon. They'll see this frontal area pushing out of northeastern China. Should be bringing some rain showers there over the week. And so fingers crossed that does help out the situation across much of the peninsula here. But now let's look back towards the tropics. So because we have Invest 96W, this could possibly be developing up. If we look at this model guidance going through the next 24 and then to into the next 48 hours, the low pressure area slowly starts to be picked up here. Once again, this is another one of those areas that we have to watch into the coming days as it does not have any other systems around it competing for the force of the moisture around it. So I think that it does have a lot of energy. Sea surface temperatures out here are rather warm. So with that said, I do think that is just another one of those areas we need to closely watch here in the coming days. But what we do see sometimes, at least, is with storms to the south of 10 degrees north, they often about the time they get towards Palau, break apart, and fall apart. So we actually have to go a little bit farther towards the north to gain a little bit of, of that Coriolis effect and get that circulation forming around it. And then I think they would be able to grab some moisture out of the intertropical convergence zone and form up to a little bit of a stronger storm. But that is all for right now, though, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at westernpacificweather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, as always, please post them in the comment box below. And lastly, I do want to remind you, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Robert Spetter or follow us at West Western Pacific Weather at Westpac Weather on Twitter or Western Pacific Weather on our Facebook page where we put updates throughout the day on what's going on out here across the Western Pacific. All right, stay safe out there.